Hello, I'm Sam Waddington and welcome to Winchester News Online. Here are today's headlines. Southampton has been named one of the most polluted cities in the UK. A verdict is expected soon on the Emile Ciliers case. And preparations begin as Winchester's annual Christmas market returns. It's the thing that when friends come, they always get excited and you say, oh yes, and then you go and it's just, it's got a sort of ting. Southampton is too dangerous to breathe, according to a new report by the World Health Organization. But what is being done about it and are local people aware? Camilla Dahl reports. Southampton's port is a hub of activity, handling many thousands of vehicles a year and being dubbed cruise capital of the UK. Yet with all this business comes at a high cost, as ships are heavily polluted. A new report by the World Health Organization has named Southampton as one of the top seven most polluted cities in the UK, equaling London's exposure levels. Although estimates vary, Southampton City Council says that the port could contribute to up to 23% of the city's pollution. However, the port is a vital part of the local area's economy. We have a lot to do with ABP, uh, who do do a lot of uh, international shipping. I know Red, Red Funnel is important not just to Southampton's economy, but also for the Isle of Wight, because well, they're an island, aren't they? So. There's uh, not many ways of getting goods over to them. We are one of the main ways of doing that. Another big issue in the city is vehicles, including lorries and buses. The council is looking at ways to tackle the problem. Coming in, we have an air quality zone, which comes in in 2019, late 2019, and that will basically bring in the requirement to either drive in a new diesel or a petrol electric or a petrol vehicle, or alternatively pay a fee to enter the city. And we imagine that most commercial operators will give us their newest, poshest, nicest vehicles and then drive to Southampton, and the older, more polluted ones will go somewhere else, which doesn't solve the problem as a country, but it does help us. The exposure levels are responsible for 110 premature deaths in Southampton each year and cost the local NHS £50 million. In fact, over 6% of premature deaths in the city are solely due to air pollution. Yet many locals are unaware. Southampton is one of the seven most polluted cities in the UK. Is it? Yeah. How do you feel about it? To be honest, I'm quite surprised. I didn't expect it like that bad. That's mad. <laughs> That's mad. Mm. Quite shocked Let's actually. Out. How can you do your bit to kind of change that? I walk a lot, so I'm doing my bit already. I'm going to drive with license, but I don't drive. I'm always using a lift, so. I think we're supposed to, uh, we're supposed to use a public transport, just so we don't need to get so many cars on the road. Catch bus is more walk. I, I walk more anyway because I live in the town centre. With new rules on vehicles set in place by 2020, this should provide some positive change. Camilla Dahl, Winchester News Online. Judge Justice Sweeney is still summing up the case of the man accused of attempting to murder his wife by sabotaging a parachute. Emile Siliers denies trying to kill his wife. Joseph Shaw reports. Emile Siliers, seen here on the left arriving at Winchester Crown Court today, is accused of two counts of attempted murder. First by causing a gas leak endangering his wife Victoria and their children, and secondly by sabotaging his wife's parachute causing her to fall 4,000 feet. Against odds of lower than 1%, she survived the fall. The prosecution claims Emil was abusive and contemptuous to his wife. The jury was told that he owed her money and would also receive £120,000 from a life insurance payment. Victoria's death would also allow him to continue an affair with a woman that he met on Tinder. Cillier admitted lying to the three women he was seeing, even telling one of them that his son with Victoria was not his and that he didn't really feel connected to him. The defence argued that Emile was being portrayed as a pantomime villain, that despite his lies and so-called financial incontinence, he was a good father who cooked for his family and did DIY around the house. Today, the jury, consisting of nine women and three men, are expected to be sent out to consider their verdict. Joseph Shaw, Winchester News Online. Drivers in Winchester know how tough it can be to park around the city. Shahat Kalra drove out to see what's happening. Parking in Winchester can be difficult, 
especially when it's Christmas time. Yeah, the only time I have found it difficult has been at, at Christmas and I can remember having to sort of park quite a way away and kind of walk in and that sort of thing. But um, aside from that, it's, it's generally quite good, I think. I think Winchester is a really busy town, especially around Christmas time. I think that there should be more parking. Uh, I don't think there's enough of it, really. Um, and that like most of the time you're limited to like four hours maximum, otherwise you have to pay a lot of money. Park and ride buses make it easier for visitors to get access into the city without having to deal with finding spaces. But what if you do need to drive into the city itself? With the Park Winchester mobile app, commuters and visitors are able to get real-time information, helping them choose the right car park. We asked drivers in Winchester to come and take a look at the application and let us know their thoughts. It says a safety warning of don't use the app while driving. Well, when else are you going to use it? <laughs> yeah, if, if you had hands free, then... Yeah, but even that wouldn't work. True. It, would it just doesn't... Be... It doesn't no, it's not... You, it? It's just I not feel practical. I like it's not really no. needed. Or if it does actual advertising. I can understand it if someone's coming into Winchester and they kind of need the to know where the car parks are. But at the same time, most road users know how to follow signs because yep. the car parks all have signs to them. And then it's also... One way, so you go past like, all the car parks anyway. Yeah, yeah. that's true. <coughs> yeah, it's just not really needed, I don't think. I wouldn't use it. I wouldn't use no, it. No, I wouldn't use it. <coughs> I definitely wouldn't. Though our focus group didn't love the application, the people behind it are hoping it will be a big success. This car park is one of the many included in the Park Winchester application. Right now, there are about 357 spaces available. However, if you're looking for a more central car park, you may find some struggle, but Winchester City Council provides live traffic boards around the one-way system. Expect to see more park and ride buses around the city in the upcoming week to cope with the income of visitors for the Christmas market. This is Charlotte Calra with Winchester News Online. Books, tea and dancers. This year marks the 200th anniversary of Jane Austen's death. A book written in her honour was launched on Monday in Eastleigh. Our community reporter Rebecca Adosin went to the event. From Pride and Prejudice to Persuasion to Emma, Jane Austen has left a long-lasting impression on the world of literature. Now, a book written in her honour, Jane Austen's England, A Walking Guide, pays tribute to Jane's love for walking and the places she enjoyed visiting. She loved walking. She called herself a desperate walker. And she had to walk. They were not rich. So she walked to shop, visit her friends, and she also walked for pleasure. At the event, Jane Austen's fans had the opportunity to ask the author any burning questions. The mayor, who was also at the launch, told us about how the 200th anniversary of Jane's death has made this a unique mayoral term. Um, Jane Austen's effect this year has been phenomenal in, with the Guildhall, uh, with Winchester Cathedral, which has been absolutely fantastic, with the launch of the new £10 note with the cathedral on it and Jane Austen. It's been a fantastic year. I have both, and thought, yes, definitely must come to this event. And it's certainly been most entertaining listening to her talking about Jane Austen and also the dancers. It was really, really lovely. Jane's death has also had other influences. The Hampshire Regency dancers also performed dances from Jane's era at the launch. Nobody had danced these dances for nearly 200 years, so it was, I think, quite right to reintroduce them. They were written now, we could see the music, and we could see what was done, but nobody had actually done it. So our task was to bring it to life. With this year being the 200th anniversary of Jane Austen's death, and that's like these, make sure her legacy lives on. Rebecca Dearson, Winchester News Online, Eastley. Work is soon to start at Burrell House, as plans are announced to turn the unused building into a hospice by early 2019. The work is expected to cost £2.5 million, but will be a vital addition to helping patients and families who are going through end-of-life care. A portion of the money is expected to come through fundraisers and donations. Work on the building's roof should begin on Monday. Delays for commuters again this morning as there were cattle on the line between Brockenhurst and Ashurst. 
Delays of up to 10 minutes were expected, though many trains saw longer effects. The train line is already under fire for having more delays since being taken over by South Western Railway earlier this year. Southampton's Mayor Flower Theatre is about to undergo a major change that it hopes will thrill audiences when they come to the shows. This is the well-known turquoise and gold interior, a familiar sight for theatre-goers over decades, but soon a £4 million refurbishment will transform the auditorium into a more traditional red and gold theme. Art galleries are usually seen as grand exhibitions and can be quite daunting to your average person on the street. However, a gallery in Southampton is trying to change this by connecting more people to contemporary art. Jake Callahan reports. When you think of an award-winning art gallery in a big city, you probably have an image of a grand building with large open spaces inside. But here, the exhibits are inside two red phone boxes. It's been nominated for a national award for community-led projects. Well, there's a lot of good, um, good projects up for nomination, but it, I think it's one that we've we previously won a similar award um, a couple of years ago. We'd be using the money for our 2018 programme, so we programme four exhibitions a year and it would go on volunteer expenses. Since opening in 2015, the gallery has featured work from over 40 artists based in and around Hampshire, and the importance of the gallery does not go unnoticed. Current artist Peter Driver told Winnell that what they are doing is not making contemporary art accessible to everybody 24-7 is a unique offer, and Southampton should be very proud of it. The K6 Gallery will be going into battle against some of the most unique and interesting art exhibitions across the country, in an attempt to win £5,000 worth of funding in order to secure the future of this historic telephone box site. Jake Callahan, Winchester News Online, Southampton. All that art in such a tiny space, who would have thought of that? Now from the confines of the telephone box to the great outdoors, where Dan Anderson has the sports. Well, it was defeat for the Bison on Saturday night, as Swindon ran out 3-1 winners. But first, tennis. Now, it's not exactly the season for strawberries and cream, and you won't be seeing tennis played on courts like these around this time of year. But thanks to an advancement in indoor courts, more and more amateurs can practice their game year-round. We sent Jonathan Leck to the University Tennis Society to find out a little bit more. After a fourth place finish in the league last year, the University of Winchester's men's tennis team is aiming for more this season. With the first team currently one point off the top of the table, head coach Chris Lawson gave us a coach's insight into how the team could improve with different training methods. To start a session, give them 10 minutes to practice as a match situation warm up so they don't just walk on the court and hit for five minutes. They actually get themselves warmed up as if they were walking onto a match court. After that, we set them some drills where they do a lot of rallying drills, movement drills, and making sure that they're making as many balls as they can and as few mistakes as they possibly can. It's not just about coaching them, it's about uh, making the team feel like a team rather than a group of individuals. In playing team matches, it's all about the team and how many wins a team can get. And with those wins, Chris hopes the team can finish the season in first place, alongside a successful cup run. The captain of the team, Daniel Horsell, feels the squad is up for the task. It's been going well. Uh, we've got a lot of members, boys and girls. We've got a really good group of guys this year. We all get on well. We're one point off the top of the league. Extra top of the league at the moment. We've got them in a couple of weeks' time. So it's a pretty crucial stage of the season right now. The weather might be too cold for some, but with matches coming in hot and fast, the tennis team are certainly keeping their cool. Jonathan Leck, Winchester News Online. Saturday night was full of bangs. Unfortunately for the Bison, they didn't quite go their way. With the herd taking penalties, Swindon took full advantage, picking up two goals. Then with seconds to go in the first period, they added a third to their tally.
But it wasn't until the third period that this one really heated up, starting with Antonov being on the end of a bad shot. Referee Matthews had no choice but to send the Swindon player for an early shower. The hosts quickly capitalised on their man advantage, creating an exciting finish. But Swindon's goalie stood strong, denying any chance for comeback. The herd will be looking to get back to winning ways at home on Sunday when they host the London Raiders. from all over the world gathered in Winchester on Saturday for the city's sixth annual film festival. The competition featured a number of short films screened at various venues around Winchester and ended with an award ceremony this weekend. Garen Wilcock took to the red carpet to find out more. It was a night for celebration on Saturday as Winchester Short Film Festival came to an end for another year. Although it began as a project to support local filmmakers, the competition now receives entries from more than 50 countries around the world. As I've seen this festival growing, I think this festival is evidence of how storytelling is alive, well and, and, and vibrant. The evening starts here, with a chance for filmmakers from near and far to come together, become part of a wider community and possibly come up with some new ideas for next year. Absolutely, yeah. Literally we're standing here having a drink. Being That's like, what's right. Okay, what have we got for next? Year? What tonight's like, about, right? Meeting like, people, yeah, like, like we've got ideas. Idea. We've got plans. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. In the pipeline. <laughs> it was amazing. It was a very intense experience for me. Um, I got to work really closely with the director, which was really exciting, and uh, had a lot of time to be able to really develop and put my own ideas into the role, which uh, doesn't happen that quite often. So it was really great. Uh, to be honest, I'm a novelist, and this was my first experience of writing a screenplay based on a short story that I'd written, and working with Matt Morton, who is really talented. He knows all sorts of things about film that I don't know. But together, we had this great like writing and directing collaboration that worked really well. I think that friendship and that sort of creative energy that we had is something that is, we're going to keep working on, and we're going to keep uh, using. Then it's on to the main event complete with red carpet, an award ceremony to recognize this year's best films and give people a chance to promote their work. The winners are selected by a panel of esteemed judges and with six awards up for grabs and a wide variety of talent on display, this is where the hard work pays off. Celebrating a huge array of wonderful, beautiful, thought-provoking films. I think that the best art and the best culture have always been at the forefront of making us see the world differently, of challenging and questioning the status quo. From simple beginnings, Winchester Film Festival continues to attract filmmakers from all over the world. And now, with plans to incorporate feature films in the future, things are only set to get even bigger. This is Garen Wilcock, Winchester News Online. And finally, Winchester is getting ready for Christmas with the opening of the annual Christmas Market and Lantern Parade. Preparations are underway in Winchester as Christmas approaches. Every year, merry events fill the streets with festive visitors. One of the most loved and long-running traditions is the Lantern Parade. The Lantern Parade has been going now for seven or eight years, and it's a really great family event. So we, families and, and groups, so the Cubs, the Scouts, and families get to make lanterns at workshops um, uh, uh, within the county and then come along and be part of the parade and it's really it's about the festival of light it's about the start of the Christmas period for us um, and for families to really enter into the spirit of the Christmas itself. Smells and sounds fill the air at another favourite and iconic event the bustling Christmas market. I think it's really important to Winchester and the Cathedral, particularly the city, uh, but, but, but all of us. We all collectively benefit from, from the visitors. Some of the city's favourite stalls will be making a return this year, and the people of Winchester are excited. 
Do you first go around the side of the cathedral and there's one full of um, the smelly things, you know, the, the dried oranges and the cinnamon and that, and it just smells, it gets you in the mood. And then there used to be, I don't know if it's going to be here this year, one that does beautiful hand-blown Christmas baubles and beautiful things like that. They'd probably be my favourite as well. The little huts selling their wares, they just like, and the smell of the mulled wine and everything like that just before you approach it. All of a sudden, it's, it's Christmas. Yeah, it's Christmas. Mulled wine, mince pies, and ice skating. Winchester is gearing up for Christmas. Larissa Patience, Winchester News Online, Winchester Cathedral. That's all for this week. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. <laughs>